Don't start. We can just go back there. Or now. We can go. What? We're done. Yeah, till the end. So what are we playing next? Worm 5. We're playing the benediction of the mantra. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Creator, the center of our joy, the great I am that I am, the source and strength of our highest dream, our light in darkness, and our hope for tomorrow. We come now on this occasion giving thanks for this moment in time. Filled with joy that comes in the morning. It's the dancing after the struggle. It is the shout after trials and tribulation. It is the bright side somewhere, oh God. It's a testimony of your faithfulness unto us. We give thanks for Meharry Medical College, a source of grace and healing. With this praise and thanksgiving in our hearts, we ask that your spirit rest on these graduates who now know for themselves with God all things are possible. And you will supply all of their needs according to your riches and glory. We thank God for parents who have supported and sacrificed. And we give glory for the faculty gathered to celebrate the fruits of their labor. Bless, O oh God, only like you know how. Anoint our heads with oil, and may it flow throughout this place today. We honor and we glorify your work, what you have done and what you will do in this place today. We give you thanks, oh God. And we ask all of this in your name, in love, in peace, in salvation and grace. It is in that name we do pray, amen.
You may be seated. Good morning. The Board of Trustees, to the deans, the faculty, administration staff, graduating classes, and to our alumni who are present with us, to family and friends, welcome to the 147th commencement ceremony of Meharry Medical College. To all in the audience, I want to remind you that as a health sciences center, we take COVID-19 quite seriously and our mask policy is in place to keep all of us safe. So I would ask you to keep your mask on during this occasion. Today, we have the privilege of being joined by some special guests in our audience. I'm just gonna call them out and ask that they be recognized. We have Mr. John Bompas, who's Executive Vice President of LifePoint Health Incorporated. Mr. Bompas, good to have you with us today. We have two former first ladies of Meharry Medical College, Mrs. Clara Elam and Mrs. Vivian Filder, who are with us. We actually have three former first ladies in the audience. It's Eileen Maupin who's with us. We're gonna stand and be. We also have uh, Dr. Timothy Knowles, who's a great, who's been a great friend of Meharry. Dr. Knowles, are you with us here today? Thank you, sir. We have Mrs. Ellen Lehman, who's a president of the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee. We have Mr. Van Pinnock, who's been a great friend of Meharry Medical College. Mr. Pinnock, are you here with us? All right, sir. And another great friend of the college, Mr. Her Mr. Herschel Warren. Herschel, stand up. <laughs> we have Mrs. Brenda Wynn, who's the clerk of Davidson County. Okay. And we have Dr. Cheryl Lee Butler, who's the president and CEO of the National Dental Association. And Ms. Lavette Henderson, who's the director of finance for NDA. And last but certainly not least, the First Lady of Meharry Medical College, my wife, Phyllis Hildreth. We are also joined by special alumni who are celebrating their 50th and 25th class reunions. Meharians, we salute you. Yes, let's give them a hand. We want to commend these great legacies of Meharry for their leadership and your professional achievements you've shown along the way in representing Meharry in this mission. The collective work of all of our alumni all over the country, all over the world, exemplifies our motto, worship of God through service to mankind. All the alumni the, with us today, would you please stand and be recognized? All of the alumni. Thank you. I would also like to acknowledge those who are present with me on the stage today. Sitting on stage right, Mr. Milton Jones, who is the Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees. <clears throat> Reverend Robin Kimbrough Hayes, the Chaplain of the College and Special Advisor to the President. <clears throat> Dr. Digna Forbes, who is the Interim Dean of the School of Medicine. <clears throat> Dr. Sheree Farmer, Dean of the School of Dentistry. Dr. Evangeline Motley Johnson, who is the Interim Dean of the School of Graduate Studies and Research. <laughs> Dr. Dwayne Smoot, the Senior Vice President for Health Affairs. Dr. Jeanette Southpaw, Chief Academic Officer. Avenetta Davis Samuels, General Counsel. And our very special guest, our commencement speaker, Dr. Camaro Jones. Another very special guest, Dr. John Maupin. We also have our faculty senate chair, Dr. Marquetta Faulkner. We also have several uh, other uh, trustees with us, one of those being 
Dr. Lewis Hargett, class of 1987. Dr. Dexter Samuels, who's the executive director of the Center for Health Policy at Meharry Medical College. Mr. Walter Woods, who's the senior vice president for institutional advancement. Dr. William Davis, our great grand marshal. <laughs> Dr. Neil Shanker, vice president for research and innovation. Dr. Carlton Adams, faculty trustee. We also have several other trustees with us. Dr. Brandon Barton, Dr. Don Griffin, Dr. Collis Johnson, Dr. Eric Floyd, Dr. Thomas Scott, Dr. Corinthia Wilkinson, Mr. Kevin Bryant, Dr. Cornus Enix, Mr. Aubrey Harwell, Dr. Martin Jeffries, Dr. Kevin Woods, and Mr. Edgar Rios. Also with us is the Meharry's Executive Vice President, Dr. Peter Millett, and the Senior Vice President for Board Relations and Community Engagement, Dr. Celia Holloway. To Vice Chairman Jones, members of the Board of Trustees, members of the faculty, our graduates, families and friends, and distinguished guests who join us. Thank you for joining us today for this very special celebration. It is a very special day when we indeed recognize the achievements of the class of 2022, the amazing class of 2022, the, one, <laughs> the 147th class of Meharry Medical College. As you all know, the entire world has been beset by an historic public health crisis, the COVID-19 pandemic. As a result, this is the first large in-person gathering we've had at Meharry for more than two years. Our organization, like many others, dis discontinued such gatherings to protect the health and safety of their people and we of our Meharians, their families, and the patients that we care for. Therefore, I think it it's appropriate to take a moment to be thankful that some truly amazing science that gave us vaccines and tireless work by public health officials and healthcare professionals, including Meharians in many places, and the grace of God has allowed us to be together today in one place after more than two years. So don't you think that's something worth celebrating? <laughs> I think so. Commencement is the occasion in which we salute these outstanding young men and women as they lead us to start their residencies, begin research as postdoctoral fellows, pursue additional graduate training, or begin careers in health policy, public health, or other fields. And they do so all across the United States in some of the best organizations in the country, I should say all over the world. We at Meharry are grateful to have been part of your life journey thus far and we thank you for the energy, the spirit, and the creativity you have shared with us over these last few years. You now join the Meharry Diaspora, consisting of thousands of alums, a diaspora that spans the globe and indeed spans more than 14 decades of history. And you are now part of that incredible legacy that is Meharry. A legacy of hope, a legacy of healing, and a legacy of opportunity. We cannot wait to see how you will change the lives of the people you will serve and transform the organizations you become a part of. But always remember that Meharry is your home away from home, and you're always welcome. And we'll keep the lights on for you. And send a check or two so we can keep the lights on. To members of the Meharry faculty, this is also your day. Let's be clear about that. Because without you and your commitment and efforts, these graduates would not be celebrating this outstanding achievement today. Your dedication, your commitment, and your passion for transmitting knowledge to Meharry's learners make today possible. So on behalf of the college to the faculty members, we offer you our sincere thanks. Best work. To the families, friends, and especially parents of the guardians, of the graduates, this is also your day. 
We acknowledge and celebrate the prayers, the hard work, the sacrifices, and the financial and emotional support you provided to the graduates to make this day possible. And so thanks to each and every one of you as well. It is, it is now my great honor to invite Vice Chairman Joan to, to the podium to bring some greetings. Good morning. President Hildreth, to our speaker, Dr. Kamara Jones, members of the Board of Trustees, distinguished faculty members, members of the class of 2022, and their family and friends. I'm Milton H. Jones, Jr., Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees. And on behalf of the Board and our Chairman, Dr. Nelson L. Adams, I'd like to welcome you to this 147th commencement ceremony of Meharry Medical College. After a two-year hiatus from gathering together in person, courtesy of a pandemic, we're back. And on this auspicious occasion, family and friends, we're in the presence of amazing achievers, persistent, dedicated, committed men and women who have persevered to bring healing to the world. They've weathered the storm of a pandemic. Many have having volunteered for service on the front lines because after all, what else are Maharians supposed to do? They have taken on the mantle of service to mankind, of being providers of health, caring, and science for a world that desperately needs them. Each of these graduates has their own story. They could tell about their past to this moment. Each path has its own beginning, some more dramatic, perhaps more remarkable or inspiring, but exceptional in its own way. But each leads here to this moment, to this point in time, this moment of combined energy. And from this nexus, it strikes me that each destiny is independent. No two are exactly alike. You will all go forth and touch countless lives as, as Meharians. Just like those Meharians before you, who year after year have gone out to meet the challenge, you will go from here to deliver hope. It is my pleasure once again to witness this collection of talent and potential, the power of combined dreams, to take it in and even draw my own encouragement and inspiration from this event today. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of the celebration. And may God richly bless all of you today. Dr. Hildreth, once again, it is my pleasure to be here. Godspeed, Maharians. I'm a little short, as you can see, <laughs> so I had to have a little help. All the guys before me are tall. Um, I, uh, good morning uh, to Dr. Hildreth, Board Vice Chair Jones, platform guest, faculty, alumni, friends, families of our graduates, and the class of 2022. I am Dr. Marquetta Faulkner, Chair of the Faculty Senate and I greet you on behalf of the faculty of Meharry Medical College. As graduates, you represent the mission of Meharry. You illustrate the evidence of the future of Meharry as outstanding and world-class physicians, dentists, scientists, and public health professionals. It has been our privilege to have participated in your education and training. As members of the faculty, we look forward to your contributions to the world of healthcare and science in medicine, dentistry, the biomedical sciences, and public health. Congratulations, class of 2022. We will expect great things from you.
Does Meharry tell, have talented students or what? <laughs> Y'all have to pray with me this morning because I got a little excited and we skipped the national anthem. But we're going to come back to it. Okay, I got a little excited. It's, it's all right. I also failed to acknowledge two of our board members, Dr. Edith Smith Rayford and Mr. Jim Williams. It is now my uh, privilege to introduce our speaker today. If I can find the right page, sorry. It's a long introduction, so <laughs> appropriately so. So it's my honor to present to you on this occasion, Dr. Kamara Phyllis-Jones. MD, PhD, MPH. She's a family physician, epidemiologist, and past president of the American Public Health Association, whose work focuses on naming, measuring, and addressing the impacts of racism on the health and well-being of our nation and, in, and the world. She is currently the 2021-2022 UC San Francisco Presidential Chair and a visiting professor in the UCF Department of Pediatrics. She recently completed her tenure as a 2021 Presidential Visiting Fellow at the Yale School of Medicine and as the 2019-2020 Evelyn Green Davis Fellow at the Ratcliffe Institute for Advanced Studies at Harvard. She taught six years as an assistant professor at the Harvard School of Public Health from 1994 to 2000 served 14 years as a medical officer at the Center for Disease Control and Prevention from 2000 to 2014, and continues as an adjunct professor at the Rollins School of Public Health at Emory, and as a senior fellow and adjunct associate professor at the Morehouse School of Medicine. At the CDC, Dr. Jones led the development and inclusion of the six question reactions to race module on the behavioral risk factor surveillance system and the organization and formalization of the CDC Racism and Health Workgroup, making it official as a CDC scientific workgroup. As president of the American Public Health Association in 2016, she launched a 25,000 member association and, with another 25,000 members, its 54 state affiliates on a national campaign against racism. Dr. Jones earned her bachelor's degree in molecular biology from Wellesley College her MD degree from the Stanford School of Medicine, and both her Master of Public Health and PhD in Epidemiology from Johns Hopkins School of Hygiene and Public Health. She also completed her residency in preventative medicine at Johns Hopkins and in family practice at the residency program in the social medicine at Montefiore Medical Center. Dr. Jones is a member of the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine, or NASM, Committee on Advancing Anti-Racism, diversity, equity, and inclusion in STEM organizations, and the NASA Roundtable on Black Men and Black Women in Science, Engineering, and Medicine. She also recently co-chaired the NASA Committee on Science, Technology, and Law Workshop on the Science of Implicit Bias, Implications for Law and Policy. She serves or has served on numerous academic, public health, and professional boards, and has received a long list of honors, including the 2011 John Snow Award in recognition of enduring contributions to public health through epidemiologic methods and practice by the American Public Health Association's epidemiology section, the Royal Society for Public Health, and the 2020 Paul Revere Award, a Lifetime Achievement Award bestowed by the Massachusetts Public Health Association. Dr. Jones has been an active contrib contributor to the national conversation about race, racism, and anti-racism through broadcast and print interviews, written and oral expert testimony, talks, workshops, panels, and town hall community uh, meetings for academic, business, and community audiences. She's also had consultations with mayors, major foundations, government agencies, and has written many op-eds and blogs and Twitter posts. She has delivered more than 15 commencement addresses since 2013. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it's my distinct honor and privilege to present to you Dr. Kamara Phyllis Jones. Good morning and congratulations, class of 2022. This is your day. I am so excited. I love graduations and I know you all love this one. And so <laughs> I'm joining your family members, your friends, this faculty and staff, the community around Meharry Medical College in recognizing you, recognizing the genius and the power in this room right now. You are now part of Meharry's history and Meharry is now part of your history. And I just want to say before I get started with my specific remarks for you all, that Meharry is also a part of my history. My father was a graduate of the Meharry Medical School in 1954. So, and furthermore, I would not even be here or anywhere if it were not for Meharry because my mother and father met here in Nashville. My mother was a Fisk graduate, my father a Meharry student. So thank you, Meharry. <laughs> anyway, what I'm going to do today is share two things, a story and a charge. The story is for all of us. The charge is for you, the graduates. So let me start with this story, which is one of the stories that I often tell in the context of my work on naming, measuring, and addressing the impacts of racism on the health and well-being of the nation. Let me just give you my definition of racism so we're all clear what we're talking about here, or at least what I'm talking about today. Racism is a system of structuring opportunity and assigning value based on so-called race, which is the social interpretation of how one looks in this race-conscious society, with three impacts. Racism unfairly disadvantages some individuals and communities, but every unfair disadvantage has its reciprocal unfair advantage, so racism is also unfairly advantaging other individuals and communities, and it is sapping the strength of the whole society through the waste of human resources. And it is as important for us to be talking about racism today as it was when Meharry was founded in 1876 and as it was when my father graduated from Meharry in 1954. There are four key messages when we start talking about racism. The first is that racism exists. And I say that as a key message because there are many people in this country who are in staunch denial of the continued existence and profoundly negative impacts of racism on the health and well-being of the whole society. So first is racism exists. The second is that racism is a system, not an individual character flaw or personal moral failing or even psychiatric illness. And yes, it can show up in those ways, but in its essence, it is a system of power. The third key message is that racism saps the strength of the whole society. And the fourth is that yes, we can act to dismantle racism. The story I'm going to tell you is to illustrate, and not to bring you all knowledge, most people in this room already understand, but illustrate this point that racism exists and then provide you with a communication tool to talk to others who might be in denial that racism exists, who might feel that their whole life has, has been a testament to this, the fact that this is the land of equal opportunity. This story I call dual reality a restaurant saga, and it is actually based on something that happened to me in my own real life when I was a first year medical student. So step into my shoes. Here I am, first year medical student, very studious, very diligent, of course. And so on this particular Saturday, like on most Saturdays, I woke up early and what am I doing? I hit the books, right, nose deep. Time passes, it's mid-afternoon, and some of my friends come over. 
Now, do they distract me from my studies? Oh, no. We all get to studying together long and hard, and now it's getting late, and we're getting hungry, and I have no food in the apartment, which was so typical of me that my friends actually said, okay, Kamara, we got that, but we're hungry, so let's go into town and find something to eat. So we do. So we walk into town and we find a restaurant and we walk in and we sit down and the menus are presented and we order our food and the food is served. So not the story that people in my generation thought I was going to tell about restaurant and racism, right? Because food is served, here we are eating. So you're like, oh, Dr. Jones, all of us done. What are you talking about? As I sat there eating with my friends, I looked across the room and I noticed a sign that was a startling revelation to me about racism. So now you're trying to remember, where did she go to medical school? <laughs> you know, and Dr. Jones, what did the sign say? Oh, well, what did the sign say? The sign said, open. So now I know I have lost many of you. How does a sign saying open, how is that a startling revelation about racism? So let me recap. Here we are, sitting in a restaurant eating. I look across the room, I see a sign that says, open. Thinking no more about it, I assume that other hungry people can walk in, sit down, order their food and eat. But because I knew something about the two-sided nature of those signs, I recognized that indeed the restaurant was now closed due to the hour, but firmly closed, and that other hungry people just a few feet away from me, but on the other side of that sign, would not be able to come in, sit down, order their food and eat. And that's when I recognized that racism structures open, closed signs in our society. Racism structures a dual reality. And for those who are sitting inside the restaurant at the table of opportunity eating, and they look up and they see a sign that says open, they don't even recognize that there's a two-sided sign going on because it is difficult for any of us to recognize a system of inequity that privileges us. So, it is, okay, come on. <laughs> that is a deep aha. That is a deep aha. So it is difficult for men to recognize male privilege and sexism. It is difficult for white Americans to recognize white privilege and racism. It is difficult for all Americans to recognize our American privilege in the global context, although people, we are living it so large right now with how much of the global supply of COVID-19 vaccine we have sequestered in this country. I have had four shots, and there are people in this same hemisphere who have not yet had their first shot. Now, those people on the outside are very well aware that there's a two-sided sign going on because it proclaims closed to them, but they can look through the window and see people inside eating. So, back inside the restaurant, to those who ask, is there really a two-sided sign? Does racism really exist? I say, I know it's hard for you to know when you only see open, in fact, that's part of your privilege, not to have to know. But once you do know, you can choose to act. So it's not a scary thing to name racism, it's actually an empowering thing to name racism. It doesn't compel you to act, but it does equip you to act so that if you care about those on the other side of the sign, which is an if, but if you do, why, why you could even talk to the restaurant owner, who is, after all, inside with you, and you could say, restaurant owner, there are hungry people outside. Why don't you open the door, let them come in? You'll make more money, and oh, the conversations we could have. Or maybe what you'll do is pass some food through the window. Or maybe you'll try to tear down the sign or break through the door, but at least what you won't be doing is sitting back saying, huh, wonder why those people don't just come on in and sit down and eat because you'll understand something about the two-sided nature of that sign that proclaims open to you. So when I have five or six minutes to share an image with the group that I hope all of you will remember and discuss with your family members and your neighbors and coworkers and people, strangers on the street even, you know, this is the image I tell to help people understand that yes, racism exists even though your life experience might have screamed that 
this was an open society. And it is structuring a two-sided or multi-sided sign. It is creating a dual or multifaceted reality. And I have to tell you, I have actually started a three-hour conversation on two separate occasions with the following question. How could people who were born inside the restaurant know something about the two-sided nature of that sign? And both times it was a three-hour conversation because there are many, many ways to know, right? I'm not, we're not going to have that right now. We don't have time. We have to give you your degrees. But what I will say, <laughs> what I will say is that I am heartened that more people who were born inside the restaurant and just two years ago might have been sitting there eating and saying, what are those people outside saying? Black lives matter. Don't they know all lives matter? More of those people are now actually saying black lives matter. More people born inside the restaurant are actually putting together the words, you know, saying the word racism, putting together the words structural racism, systemic racism. So this is important. But here's my warning. Even for that progress that we have made. It is essential, it is essential to say the word racism. We must name the word racism in our national context of widespread racism denial or we are complicit with that denial. But, so we had to put things on our web pages, you know, all of us, right? You know, tweet something out, whatever. But if that's all we do, if we just say the word, if we just profess, ah, yeah, I recognize racism exists, because racism denial is so, so staunchly held by so many in this society, six months from today, we may forget why we said that thing, because that racism denial is seductive. And we may fall into what I describe as the sleepiness, the somnolence of racism denial. So we have to go beyond naming racism to action, which means we all need to be about pulling down the sign. And of course, racism is not just a sign. It's the sign, it's the door, it's the lock. There's a whole system going on. We need to dismantle the lock, take the door off the hinges, because once we start acting, we will not forget why we are acting. So that is, that is my story for you. And I just want to add a little bit of a twist for all of us, but even for, especially for you all the graduates before I get to your charge. I have started doing a lot of thinking these days about people who value comfort. There are a lot of people who value comfort. And people who value social justice. There are a lot of people who value social justice. And what I have come to understand is that in the status quo, in the current situation, those values are actually at polar opposite ends, right? And so those people who value comfort are like those who are born inside the restaurant, you know, sitting at the table of opportunity. They are comfortable and they're benefited by the status quo, which is why they value comfort and they actually don't wonder why other people aren't coming in, may not even notice why other people aren't coming in the restaurant. They don't even want to examine, is there really a two-sided sign? Somebody told them there might be. They're passing laws all over the country. You can't go near that sign to look and see if it says closed on the other side because it might make the children uncomfortable. You know, they don't think that there is, right. <laughs> they don't think that there is anything that, some, that an outsider could do to improve their conversation or, or, or improve anything going on there, right? And so they have been told maybe that it'd be nice if you had an outsider at your table and they think, well, it might make a better picture, but really they don't expect genius or insight to come with that, right? And so, and they don't even um, care to know what the outsiders are saying. They aren't even craning, what are they saying outside? They certainly don't wonder where their food comes from and the same people who are outside the restaurant can't come in to eat are the same ones growing the food, transporting the food, bringing it around to the kitchen, serving the food, but can't sit up in the, ta in the restaurant and eat it. And the most, the most characteristic thing about them is that they jealously guard their seats at the table. So those are those who value comfort. So I've given you a picture of that. There are those who value social justice and they value social justice for two reasons. First, they know that there is a two-sided sign going on. Many of them know that because they were born on the outside and saw the signs enclosed but could look through the window and see people inside eating. But they also know that the operation of that two-sided sign 
saps the strength of the whole society. Now, I am not saying that the circumstances of your birth consign you to either valuing comfort or valuing social justice. And there are people who were born inside the restaurant who do wonder why aren't more people coming in. They do crane, what are those people saying? And they go and they open the door and they go across town and stay a while and they understand that there's a two-sided thing going on. That's an easier trip to make than people who are born outside the restaurant who do get inside sometimes, but sometimes the things they have to say to convince the gatekeepers that they should be allowed in the restaurant, which include, well, you know, of course, everybody in this room is smart and hardworking. That is a given, but there have been smart, hardworking people in this country for centuries who were never able to get to do what you're doing today. But they had to do some story. But the main thing that they often have to do to get inside the restaurant is to swear up and down that they will never talk about the two-sided nature of the sign. Okay, so now, so those people can come in. Often, when those people do get inside, they are placed near the window so the people outside can see them. Sometimes they, you, they use that position near the window and the door to put their foot in the door to hold it open so that more people can come in. But sometimes, sometimes they sit there and they stop They're the gatekeepers and keep other people from coming in. So that's a warning, don't be that. And so what I just want to say before I end the story and go to your charge is what we need to do in this society is move more people from valuing comfort to valuing social justice, recognizing that in the current status quo, valuing social justice will not always or may not ever be comfortable, but that is what we need to do. So my charge to you, my charge to you, I call them my four BCs. B, like the letter B, the letter C, the four BCs, which are habits of mind for social justice warriors. I'm gonna tell you what the four are and then I'm gonna break them down and then close. The four BCs are be courageous, be curious, be collective, and build community. So when I say be courageous, I mean speak your truth be unafraid of controversy, embrace challenge, because when you embrace something that at first made you nervous to do it, you will learn more about your capacities and know that for all of us, the edge of our comfort is actually our growing edge. So be courageous. The second one, be curious, means ask why. And then ask why again, and ask why again, and ask these serial whys so that you don't accept superficial explanations, but you arrive at deep causes. And we have to do that as clinicians, as scientists, as policy people. We need, in public health, we need to ask these serial whys. Also, when you're curious, it means read. Read widely. Read history. If you're curious, more, learn more than one language because that's like a wormhole into under other people's experiences. And when you're curious, travel as much as you can, especially across town, as well as around the world. And when you're curious, walk with curiosity to learn what each person has to teach you. So that is be curious. The third one, be collective, means care about the whole, right? So that means share your energy, your time, your ideas, your stuff with others. And it means not only care about the whole in the current time, but care about the whole across generations. Recognize that you are standing on the shoulders of others, so you need to stand tall so others can stand on your shoulders, right? Recognize that it is important for all of us to mentor. You know, I think about passing the baton. I'm going to illustrate it like this. This is not how relay racers, pass. they pass it like this, but I, you know. Anyway, but I think that we need to be passing barrels of batons. Choo, choo. Shoo, shoo, right? We need to be thinking, passing barrels of batons, and when you receive a baton from somebody, make your own barrels of batons so we can start amplifying this work. And when I say be collective, organize, because collective action is power. Collective action informs us, it inspires us, it propels us, and it protects us. So that was the third, be collective. The fourth BC is build community. 
So be interested in the stories of others, believe the stories of others without requiring cell phone video documentation or body cam footage, and then join in the stories of others. So talk to strangers. Create opportunities for us to burst through our bubbles, to experience our common humanity on the other side of town in different circumstances. Speak up and take action on behalf of others. Go across town and stay a while. Live in somebody else's shoes. So that is build community. So congratulations again, class of 2022. I join everybody in this room and in the world. You are very well equipped as you go forth from this very historic institution. I want you to go forth with being, being courageous, being curious, being collective, and building community. I want you to go forth and matter. Thank you. Mr. Vice Chair, on behalf of the faculty of Meharry Medical College, we present to you and to the Board of Trustees the candidates for the degrees in the class of 2022, the following. The Doctor of Philosophy in Biomedical Sciences, the Master of Science in Public Health. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I've been instructed we should do the national anthem now, rather than at the end. <laughs> and I do follow directions. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Vice Chairman Jones, on behalf of the faculty of Meharry Medical College, we present to you to, and to the Board of Trustees the candidates for the degrees in the class of 2022 and for the following. The Doctor of Philosophy in Biomedical Sciences, the Master of Science in Public Health, the Master of Health Science, the Doctor of Dental Surgery. <laughs> the Doctor of Medicine and the Certificates in Clinical Scholars, Health Policy and Public Health Program at Meharry Medical College. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Meharry Medical College, we hereby authorize you, Mr. President, 
to confer degrees upon the candidates who have qualified in all respects for the Master of Health Science, the Master of Science in Public Health, the Doctor of Philosophy, the Doctor of Dental Surgery, and the Doctor of Medicine degrees. I also authorize you to confer the certificates in health policy and public health that were earned through the Center for Health Policy at Meharry Medical College. Thank you, Vice Chairman Jones. The degrees will be conferred upon the grant candidates in the following order as outlined in the program. We'll begin with the School of Graduate Studies and Research by Dean Vangelin Mot Motley Johnson. That will be followed by the School of Dentistry by Dean Sheree Farmer. And follow finally, the School of Medicine by Dr. Digna Forbes. So Dr. Dean Evangela Motley, would you please come forward? <laughs> Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the Dean and Faculty of the Schools of Graduate Studies and Research, I am proud to present to you the candidates who have qualified in all respects for the degrees, Master of Health Sciences, and, the, and in your program, the list of students can be found on page 19 through 23, the Master of Science in Public Health, the names are found on page 17 and 18, and the Doctor of Philosophy, the, the, the names of the students are found on page 15. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Meharry Medical College, I hereby confer upon you the degrees Doctor of Philosophy, Master of Science in Public Health, and Master of Health Sciences. These degrees admit you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities which pertain to the degree you have been er you have earned. In testimony whereof, you will receive the diploma for which you have been recommended, officially signed and affixed with the college's seal. Candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy degree, please rise and come forward. Kiera Vache Atkins. Heather Kennedy Beasley. Shalanda M. Ingram. Diva Sade Whalen. Stephen Deshaun Williams. Bina Bat Israel.
Michael, I would like to point out that Bina is an MD, PhD graduate. I think we also have another MD, PhD who's not with us today, Ms. Dr. Marshall Ellison. So will the PhD graduates of the School of Graduate Studies and Research remain standing as I lead you in reciting the Biomedical Researchers Pledge that is appropriate to your new standing in the health professions research community. We urge all PhD level biomedical scientists in the audience to join us in repeating this pledge found on page 16 in the program. So let us repeat in unison. I I accept this opportunity to follow the difficult and rewarding path of biomedical science. I will endeavor to honor all those who have contributed to this opportunity by always working to the utmost of my abilities and by increasing those abilities when possible. I pledge to use my energy, intellect, and education to enhance the lives of all humans understanding that often the greatest strides are made through efforts to assist the dispossessed and underprivileged in our world. I would carefully consider and remain mindful of the ethical implications of my work. I will never use my gifts and skills to intentionally harm any individual, group, or the planetary environment. In planning and carrying out my work, I will treat this planet and all its life forms with honor and respect. I will honor and respect the efforts of my teachers, talk, taking great care to always give credit where credit is due, and always humbly understanding that all that I see, I see by standing on the shoulders of the many scientists who have gone before me. I also will honor and respect my students and all who rely on that which I have learned endeavoring to truthfully and openly disclose all my methods, findings, and conclusions. So long as I adhere to this pledge, may I have continued success in the field of biomedical science. Thank you, and you may be seated. <laughs> Candidates for the Master of Science in Public Health degree, please rise and come forward. Jayla M. Berry. China J. Matt Branch. Yandi Leah Breedlove. <laughs> Ashley Victoria Rose Brooks. Kendrick Cameron, Jr. Oh. 
Courtney Renee Chandler. Troy Artisan Cunningham. Hosanna Debesai. Jessica Dompre. Kirsten Rain George. Stephanie Graham. Princess Shania Granberry. Abria S. Grimet. Anasia Martine Hardman. Carlos Malik Hill. Is Sarah D. Hopkins. <laughs> Janae Louise Jones. <laughs> Ashley Leon. Ejama Ohadwa. Dara M. Richardson. Kyra Elise Robinson. Elise Robinson. <laughs> Emira Elise Sanders. Julian Aurelia Taylor. Frederick Devonte Thompson. <laughs> Caitlin Anne Marie Wiley.
Will the Master of Science in Public Health graduates remain standing as I lead you in reciting the Public Health Pledge as seen on page 28 of your printed program? All public health professionals in the audience are invited to join us in reciting the pledge in unison. Please recite with me. I pledge to do all within my power to safeguard human and environmental health through prevention, protection, promotion, and educational efforts. I will accept the responsibility to use my talents, training, and professional experience to instill public trust in all my public health endeavors. It is my personal commitment to serve my community with integrity and pride. As a member of the public health community, I recognize the unique responsibilities associated with this role. I commit myself to the high standards of professionalism and ethical conduct required to achieve community health and to ensuring that the basic resources and conditions necessary for health are accessible to all members of the community. Thank you, and you may be seated. Will our largest class ever of the candidates for the Master of Health Science degree please rise and come forward? <laughs> Imani C. Akaram. Alexis R. Allen. Namdi Anige. Journey Moniz Beatty. Ariel Kristen Beard. Tiana Asia Billups. Tanisha Kelly Boyd. Taylor Brown. Evan Winston Brown. La Maria J. Bernie. Cade Campbell.
Orlaine Marie Caro. Niveline J. Charles. Sheree Chester. Kibuze Chiaka. Sasha Belinda Mapombo Chupa. Kiera J. Clark. Jordan Lee Cohen. Sierra Simone Collins. Colton H. Collins. Jamila Monique Connor. Mirko P. Darrington. Gamayo Duzuma. Jordan Dickens. Kayla S. Dixon. Trey Vincent Dollar. Mariah L. Drain. <laughs> Ashley Sion Duncan. <laughs> Rebecca I. Eke Anyanwu. Alexandria Maria Eubanks. Shania P. Ferguson. Kristen Antoinette Llewellyn. Nikita Shanae Fordham. Raven Simone Foster. Nigel Jonathan Fullerton. Gio Gallego. Jessica Lauren Gates. Michelle J. Gibbs. Sandy Isam Gurgis. J. 
John Jerome Glenn II. Whitley D. Hall. Kennedy E. Hamilton. <laughs> Bethany S. Harris. <laughs> Eliza W. Harris. Ravanya Hawkins. <laughs> Amina Danielle Henderson. Angelica Ogechi Izugu. Aaliyah Monet Jackson. Jasmine Mary. Jackson. Jessica Faith Jackson. Rashawn W. Jackson. Khadija M. Jana. Blair Nicole Jason. Sashan Diana John. Michelle N. Kaiminyi. Okay. Ryan B. Kamrani. Saxton Nile Heat. Camille Simone King. <laughs> Tyler A. Lanier. <laughs> Scotty Linden. Ronnie Catherine Lindsay. Ariana LaShawn Martin. Kiana J. 
Martin. Nikuya M. McKenzie. Mary Julie Medna. Felucio Elijah Micah. <laughs> Olivia Myra Moline. Caitlin Alexis Morris. Mariah Imani Muhammad. Camille Leanne Neal. Andreas Nelson. Ogechi Destiny Wakacha. Nasoma in Wakoye. Cheryl Gabriella Camis Casiona Obiad. Chidalu Okoli. Ikena Onyekachi. Osu Ahmadi Jarrell B. Patterson Isaiah R. Pickett Raheem Devante Stephen Pierre. <laughs> Vedel Arthel Price. Danielle Monique Pryor. Glenn L. Reeves, Jr. Jordan Christopher Roberts. Rutland <laughs> Denise Iodi Sean John okay. 
Abir Sultan Sala. Omobosola Omor Nike Salisu. Cassandra M. Shaw. Bria Monique Smith. Lindsay Savere Smith. <laughs> Aaliyah L. Stateson. Kennedy Alexis Steele. Anthony Harold Suggs. Raymond Sweat the Third Asha Awar Tate Rainaya McKinnon Taylor Terrace P. Taylor. <laughs> Jamarius Terrell Thomas. Deonri Ramsey Thurman Jr. Tyra E. Trotman. Nosayaba O. Uya Ohanba. Maya Brianna Wall. Deanna Nicole Webb. Essence S. Weeks. Madison E. Williams. Theodore Gerard Williams.
Master of Health Sciences graduates, please remain standing as I lead us in reciting in unison the Master of Health Sciences pledge as seen on page 28 of your printed program. All right, so we'll wait till the last student get to his seat. Okay. <laughs> Please recite the pledge in unison. As I embark on my career, now an alumnus of the Master of Health Sciences, I pledge that I will represent my scientific profession honorably by conducting myself and my professional endeavors in a manner that is always above reproach. I will incorporate the ethical and moral principles that constitute integrity in all that I do and faithfully ensure that the results of my professional activities ultimately benefit our world. With this affirmation, I will acknowledge and honor the contributions of those who have preceded me while seeking truth and the advancement of knowledge in all my actions. I will strive to show compassion, embrace diversity, and above all, uphold excellence that I should become a worthy role model deserving of respect by all. Thank you, and you may be seated. Will candidates for the Doctor of Dental Surgery degree please rise? As you come forward to receive your diplomas, As you come forward to receive your diplomas, Mr. President, upon the recommendation of the Dean and Faculty of the School of Dentistry, I am pleased to you to present to you the candidates who have qualified in all respects for the Doctor of Dental Surgery degree. Their names are printed in the program on pages 29 through 31. Graduates, by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Meharry Medical College, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Dental Surgery, admitting you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities which throughout the world pertain to the degree. In testimony whereof, you will receive a diploma for which you have been recommended, officially signed and affixed with the college's seal. Mercedes Ajimfra. Sadaf Ahmed. Terry Akpua. Elizabeth Alabi. Ama Asari. (laughs) 
Ephraim Anaya. Archana Avali. Michael Bennett the second. Aaliyah Billings. <laughs> Madison Bowler. <laughs> Denisha Bowles. Tiffany Brown. Eric Burris. Essence Campbell. Jasmine Clyde. <laughs> Alexandria Cobb. <laughs> Gislaine Cohen. Marcus Creighton. Jonna Cummings. Brittany Davis. Brandon Davison. <laughs> Rainy Devi. <laughs> Raishanique Duplessis. Sarah Elliman. <laughs> Kyle Elmore. <laughs> Christina Eskew. Mayjean Etienne. <laughs> Emerald Ferguson. <laughs> Neariah Fields. Jared Fletcher.
Fabian Fuller II. Rima Gandhi. Michael Gibson. Andrea Goodman. Jasmine Gosi. Jared Graham. Bria Green. <laughs> Wafa'a Hamid. <laughs> Clarence Austin Hogan. Ronnie Ibrahim. Bradley Eway. Taylor Jackson. Hannah Jeffress Vanders. Erica Jones. Jarrell Jones. Kelsey Cullerman. Jared Lee. Marcus Legere. Michael Lynn. Jasmine Mack. Amber Mark. Irini Mishreki. Jonathan Mosley. Silvana Musa.
Emrit Paul Nord. Kyle Wonkwo. Uju Wizu. Dominique Oliver. He rain Patel <laughs> Kashyap Patel Alexis Phillips. <laughs> Christiana Potter. <laughs> Alina Rayamaji. Joseph Rawlings. Martia Simmons. Jalen Simmons. Kanisha Smith. Marcellus Stansberry. Swati Trehan. Christina Aponte Valcarcel. And Harry Wallace. Dental graduates, please remain standing as I lead you in reciting the dental oath in unison. As a professional courtesy, we ask every dentist in the audience to please stand and join our graduates in reciting the dental oath, found on page 32 of your printed program. 
Please join me in reciting the oath in unison. I, realizing the privileges and opportunities that have been given to me, my study, and the arts of dentistry, and appreciating the significance of the dental degree which has been conferred upon me, do hereby willingly pledge that I will diligently uphold the dignity, honor, and objective of the dental profession and to the best of my ability will contribute to its prestige, proficiency, and progress. This I solemnly accept my responsibility to the patient to give him the best of my knowledge and skill and to maintain an impeccable relationship with him that will warrant his trust and confidence. That I will faithfully observe the principles of ethics set forth by the profession and that I will lend my influence and support to dental education, to organized dentistry, and to all segments of the profession which contribute to the fulfillment of this purpose. Thank you. You may be seated. Candidates, candidates for the Doctor of Medicine degree, please rise and come forward. <laughs> Mr. President, <laughs> Mr. President, Upon the recommendation of the Dean and the Faculty of the School of Medicine, I am privileged to present to you the candidates who have qualified in all respects for the degree of Doctor of Medicine. Their names are found on the program pages 33 to 37. Graduates. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Meharry Medical College, I confer upon you the degree Doctor of Medicine, admitting you to all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities which throughout the world pertain to this degree. In testimony whereof, you will receive the diploma for which you have been recommended, officially signed and affixed with the college's seal. Congratulations.
Kirsten Michelle Adams. Noma Udoka Alozi. Abdurrahim Sari Amro. Neka J. Anyanwu. Rashid Archer Edodo. George T. Ashen. <laughs> Newman Kwame Bowachi Anza. <laughs> Taylor Renee Brooks. Corey A. Brown. Roger Carlinton Brown. Brittany Rasheen Guy Bundy. Sydney M. Cadiz. Andrea Elise Camarina. Hamza Chaudhry. Irene Crystal Coffee. Madison Renee Cook. Nicole Henry Kreppel. Dylan Jason Crowell. Malika Don. Amber Nicole Davidson. <laughs> Rusum G. Desta. Dominique Jasmine Dixon. Vanessa and Ketchy Lamini. Bertrand N. Ibunji. Diana Onyanichi Ekachupu. Hiba Fari. Laura Fandino. Brittany Nichelle Feaster. Nantambu Akil Fentress. Erica J. Furman. Joseph Michael J. Fields. Mayaka Danielle Fortune. Paul Al Francois.
Michael Wadia Gad. Taylor Gant. Mekdez Gantane. <laughs> Mohammed F. Hamoud. <laughs> Chakela Tanika Hart. Julius Melvin Henderson, Jr. <laughs> Nisha L. Hodge. <laughs> Donald Hollis, the third. Brittany L. Hopkins. <laughs> Rhythm Taira Simone Howie. <laughs> Devin Paul Hughes. Ashley Page Hunt. Camilla Mari Hunter. Caitlin Mary Isidore. Dwight Johnson the second Lashonda Brooke Johnson Shayer P. Keon. Trace Robertson Kimler. Solomon Klein. Jerry Langham. Asha K. Lindsay. Mika K. Lumsden. Ruthie Mamo. Kayla Renee Massey. Simone Mays. Chukwameka Emba. Deja M. McLean.
Brandon Lawson McFadden. Marissa Denise Morgan. Biashe D. Mosisa. James M. Mwangi. Adoma Vera Ngari. Gabriel Chibize and Keme Jr. Jesse Keen No. Adobe Andy Diamaka Okocha. Afolayan Kehinde Oladeji. Mutia Olorum Femi. Chaduzium Anyadima. Bavi Parik, Jordan T. Patrick, Paris Price. Asante Ramon Quintana. <laughs> Jada Lene Ritas. <laughs> Alex Charlie Robertson. Carlene Saintus. Aisha Simone Cease. Elias Sesse. Jasmine A. Sevilla. Danielle Oluwatobi Oladiran Ekondayo Oluwadamilare Shanibare. Alexander J. Sita. Melinda Nicole Simmons. Moshape Tomasin Shoda. Bola Soliman.
Piera A. Sosa. Thomas J. Stovall. Samantha M. Tall. Micah Ajela Taylor. Johanna Ariana Tesfai. <laughs> Kayla Lynn Thomas. <laughs> Jasmine, Jasmine Lachey Thompson. Zinzi S. Thompson. <laughs> Carla Cocoa Titus. <laughs> Jacob R. Uskovich. Ashley D. Vallisamond. Derek L. Wagner. Keith Nesta Walters. Lester Alex Watch. <laughs> Ashley M. Watson. Jacob J. Wells. Isaac D. Werner. Kenyatta Williams. Rebecca Yang. Bina Bat Israel. Graduates of the School of Medicine, please remain standing as I lead you in reciting the modern version of the Hippocratic Oath. We invite all physicians in the audience, even if you're not a Meharry graduate, to join with our newest colleagues in reciting the oath printed on page 38 of your program. Let us recite the oath in unison. 
I swear to fulfill the best of my ability and judgment this covenant. I will respect the hard-won scientific gains of those physicians in whose steps I walk and gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. I will apply for the benefit of the sick all measures that are required, avoiding those twin traps of overtreatment and therapeutic nihilism. I will remember that there is art to the medicine as well as science, and that warmth, sympathy, and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or the chemist's drug. I will not be ashamed to say, I know not, nor will I fail to call on my colleagues when the skills of another are needed for a patient's recovery. I will respect the privacy of my patients for their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. Most especially must I tread with care in matters of life and death. If it is given to me to save a life, all thanks, but it may also be within my power to take a life. This awesome responsibility must be faced with great nimbleness and awareness of my own frailty. Above all, I must not play at God. I will remember that I do not treat a fever chart or a cancerous growth, but a sick human being whose illness may affect the person's family and economic stability. My responsibility includes these related problems. If I am to care adequately for the sick, I will prevent disease whenever I can, for prevention is preferable to cure. I will remember that I remain a member of society with special obligations to all my fellow human beings, those sound of mind and body as well as the infirm. If I do not violate this oath, may I enjoy life and art, respected while I live and remembered with affection thereafter. May I always act so as to preserve the finest tradition of my calling, and may I long experience the joy of healing those who seek my help. Thank you. Doctors of Medicine, you may be seated. Will the graduates of the class of 2022 please stand? <laughs> Mr. President, distinguished platform guests, honored alumni classes, graduates, members of the Meharry family, ladies and gentlemen, I am privileged to ex execute the will of the Meharry National Alumni Association by formally inducting in the class of 2022 into membership and solicit their active participation henceforth. The Alumni Association oath can be found on page 55 of the program booklet. Will all 22 graduates stand and repeat the alumni oath in unison with me? I having been given the opportunity to enter the health sciences as a provider and or researcher, do hereby pledge to give my support to Meharry Medical College and the Meharry National Alumni Association Incorporated. I will encourage gifted, mission-oriented students to consider Meharry as the institution for study in the health sciences. I will network with my fellow Meharians. I will give generously of my finances to the extent that I am able to do so. I will always conduct myself in a manner to make my alma mater proud, Meharry Medical College proud. Thank you. We welcome you to our new alumni membership to the Meharry National Alumni Association. Please be seated.
Mr. Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees, Mr. President, Dr. Jones, Dr. Maupin, graduates, platform guests, alumni, faculty, staff, students, family, guests, ladies and gentlemen and loved ones, good morning. The recipients of the Robert Johnson Foundation Health Policy Certificate and Public Health Certificate have completed a rigorous course of study in health policy and public health, in addition to completing requirements for their respective degrees in medicine, dentistry, biomedical sciences, and public health, and are now prepared to join experts around the world in shaping healthcare policy for this country and our world. With the 2022 recipients of the Certificates in Health Policy and Public Health, please rise and stand as I call your name. Jost Mary Empison, Jayla Berry, Elia Billings, Andrea Camarina, Kenrick Cameron, Mika Lumston, Christiana Potter, Dahara Richardson, Thomas Stovall, Jacob Yukovich. These are our health policy scholars. And now for the candidates in the Certificate in Public Health. Terry Akapua. Elizabeth Ellaby. Etran Anaba. Amaya Asari. Michael Bennett, Aaliyah Billings, Madison Bowler, Denisha Bowles, Tiffany Brown, Erica Bur Eric Burris, Essence Campbell, Jasmine Clyde, Ghislaine Cohen, Cody Cook, Marcus Creighton, Jaina Cummings, Brittany Davis, Brandon Davison, Rashanik Duplasis, Kyle Elmore, Medjean Etnine. Emerald Ferguson, Nariah Fields, Jared Fletcher, Fabian Fuller, Michael Gibson, Andrea Goodman, Jasmine Josie, Jared Graham, Bria Green, Wafa Hamid. Arkea Hayward, Ronnie Ibrahim, Bradley Iwi, Taylor Jackson, Hannah Jeffries Vanders, Erica Jones, Jarrell Jones, Kelsey Kellerman, Jared Lee. Marquise Legiri, Michael Lynn, Jasmine Mack, Amber Mark, Inrini Meshriki, Jonathan Mosley, Silvana Musa, Kyle Roncano, Yui Wazia, Dominique Oliver, Keshit Patel, Lexis Phillips, Joseph Rollins, Martia Simmons, Jalen Simmons, Kanisha Smith, Marcellus Stansberry, Christina Velcarasel, 
and Harry Wallace. Please give these certificates recipients a round of applause. It is now my great honor to recognize one of my Harry's own, John E. Moppin, Jr., DDS, Class of 72, MBA, served with great distinction as the ninth president and CEO of Meharry Medical College from 1994 to 2006. He was the first alumnus to do so and the second dentist to lead the institution. Today we recognize him as Meharry's first president emeritus. His numerous achievements are summarized on page nine of your program, but we would like to focus on his history as Meharry's president as cited in the resolution of the Board of Trustees. This time, I would like to invite Vice, Vice Chair Milton Jones to join me to read the resolution of the Board of Trustees for this occasion. Dr. Maupin, would you please come forward, forward to receive these honors? Whereas, Dr. John E. Maupin, Jr. became the ninth president of Meharry Medical College in 1994. And whereas Dr. Maupin was the first alumnus and second dentist to leave Meharry, and whereas during his 12 years as president of Meharry, Dr. Maupin secured the future and mission of the college by eliminating the significant debt burden, demonstrating and demanding operational excellence forging strategic partnerships, investing more than $70 million to elevate campus facilities, strengthening the college's academic standing and earning full accreditation across all programs. And whereas under the leadership of Dr. Maupin, Meharry achieved historically significant milestones, such as the establishment of the academic alliance with Vanderbilt University, known as the Meharry Vanderbilt Alliance and successfully completed a $125 million capital campaign commanding national attention and respect of peer institutions. And whereas Dr. John E. Maupin Jr. emerged as an influential and highly respected leader in Nashville, Tennessee and throughout the nation, serving on numerous boards and professional organizations, including among others, the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee, North Nashville Community Development Corporation, President of the National Dental Association, Board of Overseers of the Vanderbilt Ingram Cancer Center, 100 Black Men of Middle Tennessee, the Rotary Club, Chairman of the United Way of Middle Tennessee, Vice Chairman of Education for the Nashville Area Chamber of Commerce, and Board Member of the Middle Tennessee Council of Boy Scouts of America. And whereas Dr. John E. Maupin, Jr., provided distinguished service to Meharry Medical College during his tenure as president, the impact of which continues to contribute to the success of the college. Therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees for Meharry Medical College recognizes the monumental contributions of Dr. John E. Maupin, Jr. to Meharry Medical College and confers the honorary title of President Emer Emeritus, along with deep respect appreciation and gratitude for his tireless service and commitment. By, by virtue of the authority vested in me, the Board of Trustees of Meharry Medical College concurring, I confer upon you the honorary title of President Emeritus, Meharry Medical College, with deep respect, appreciation, and gratitude, signifying the highest level of esteem without granting any authority or administrative functions, remuneration, benefits, or other terms of employment. Congratulations, Dr. Moffat. <laughs> <laughs> My brother.
Don't worry, I, I won't be long. Um, first, let me just say to the graduates, of all the work we do, the most important and most moving moment each year during my tenure, and I know continues today to those up on this stage, is to look out here and see these faces of our graduates. To you, I salute you. And to your families, I say thank you for entrusting you with this wonderful institution, Meharry Medical College. Applause for them. That's who needs to be here. To President Hildreth and to Milton Jones and to other members of the Board of Trustees, I can't tell you, uh, I can't put into words uh, how deeply I, am, I, am, I, am, I appreciate this honor, this significant award today, and especially during this moment while I celebrate my 50th reunion uh, with my class of 1972, who stayed there supportive every day, my class. I share this moment with my wife of 41 years, soon to be 42 years, Eileen Maupin. She was my rock, and she was all the way during my time, and she was my wing, my wind among, under my, beneath my wings. Um, she's special. I am so blessed to have her in my life. I also share this honor with the members of the Board of Trustees who brought me on board and who served during my tenure, many of whom are here still serving Meharry every day as current board members. I thank them for their steadfast support and for their support of our bold actions and for their confidence in my leadership. I share this honor with the outstanding academic and administrative leadership team that we were able to assemble, and the dedicated faculty and staff that embraced transformational change and took Meharry Medical College to new heights. As you know, and I strongly believe in the word we when it comes to leadership, and I hope each of you graduates understand that clearly. It's about we, not about I. And I was so blessed to have had and to have been embraced by so many in the Nashville community. They mentioned some of them, but I would be remiss if I didn't call out their names at this special moment. For if it had not been for their embrace, I don't believe the many achievements that are recognized in this document about our time, my tenure as president, could have happened. I want to be sure that I say out loud the names like community leaders, Jane and Richard Eskin, Tommy Friss, Bill Rector, I mean, Ben Rector, Martha Ingram, Joel Gordon, and Sam, the late Sam Howard. Academic leaders such as Vanderbilt University Vice Chancellor Harry, uh, for Health Affairs, Harry Jacobson, and Associate Vice Chancellor for Health Affairs, Dr. Colleen Conway Welch. Elected officials such as Councilman Ma Mansfield Douglas, Mayor and later Governor Phil Bredesen, and State Senators Thelma Harper and John Ford, and and State Representative and Speaker Pro Tem Lois D. Berry, U.S. Congressman Jim, Jim Cooper, and U.S. Senator Bill Frist, and my close colleague and dear friend and, and, and confidant, the late Dr. Albert G. Berry, who helped guide me in government relations and community relations as well. Each of, each of these names I've called out, and many more that I don't have time to, to, to share with you, played an important role in moving the Meharry agenda forward. Moreover, what is so special about Meharry is its family and the love that is expressed by so many when you take on the responsibility of leadership. I was always supported spiritually, very strongly, by two couples, the former president the, ninth, the seventh president of Meharry Medical College, Dr. Lloyd Elam and his wife, Clara. Also by my dean, uh, my, my chair of the Department of, of, of Operative Dentistry, Dr. Fred Fielder, who was also dean when I arrived here as president and later retired. He and his wife, Vivian Fielder, showed up at every single event in the audience and always cheered me on and would give me a warm thank you or a warm pat to say, keep doing what you're doing. You're serving your alma mater. 
and to them I appreciate it. And they're here again today, two in spirit and two in the audience, Clara and Vivian. Thank you so much, thank you so much. I guess you know how I am, I'm a spiritual person, but I think if there's one thing that I had the opportunity to do, and pretty much, I will say this single-handedly, I convinced the board that I, we wanted to do it, I convinced others, but I wanna draw your attention in my ending my comments to the seal in the front of this, this podium. When I was a student and then when I came back as president, the seal had a banner at the bottom of it and it, was, it was, had an inscription in Latin. And all of us that went to school here were taught that if we couldn't read Latin, most of which we couldn't, it said, you could see the word servitude in it, but what it, really, what it said was it was our motto, but it was in Latin. And so if you didn't go here, most people didn't know what our motto was unless we pronounced it frequently. But the seal just kind of hit it a little bit. And one day when we were doing a branding program and trying to do, make ourselves, spruce ourselves up on paper at least, I kept looking at the seal saying, I know what we need to do. We need to put a gold rope braid, braid, braid around the seal so it's locked in and in royalty. But we also need to take the banner off and put it in English and put it in the center of the seal. And one day when I was going for spiritual support to my pastor, Reverend William Buchanan of 15th Avenue Baptist Church, he was sharing with him that I was, he was, I was sharing with him the successes we had had. And he looked at me and said, I expected nothing less. And I said, well, pastor, I, I appreciate that. He said, you don't understand, Maupin. I expected nothing less because I remember the day you changed the seal. And what you did was you put God's name in the center, in plain English, in the heart of Meharry Medical College. And what he said to me that day, as long as God's name's in the center of this institution's heart, it will always be the greatest place on this earth to Meharry Medical College. Thank you, thank you. To my graduates, to my graduates, Worship of God through service to mankind and service to Meharry Medical College. May your future be bright. Thank you, Dr. Moppin. I need to acknowledge that Dr. Moppin was president and recruited me to Meharry the first time around. So in a lot of ways, I owe my presence here at Meharry to this great man. So thank you, John. Now I would like to present, the, present to you the 2022 recipients of the Leonard Toe Humanism Award in Medicine. This year's honorees are one of our graduates, Daniel Shonabare from Toronto, Ontario, and as faculty member, Dr. Kimberly Weiss Etheridge, MD, Assistant Professor in Pediatrics. Will you both stand and be recognized? Now we're going to perform our alma mater, if that's okay.
special announcement to make. The Board of Trustees have voted to confer an honorary Doctor of Science degree on a Meharry icon, Dr. Henry Moses, who, <laughs> Dr. Moses has been affiliated with Meharry since 1964, and it's not an exaggeration to say that he's a true Meharry icon. We're going to recognize him with an honorary degree at convocation in the fall. Thank you. So once again, we've come to the end of another commencement exercise at Meharry. You know, as a parent, I've sent two children into the world and had to steal myself twice for that moment. But as president of this institution, with every graduating class, I get to prepare for that moment once a year. This year, since we're back together again, the emotional effect of gathering together, having friends and family with us to share this moment has been a wish fulfilled. I have to say that it's also been a rewarding and reflective occasion for me. Graduates, when you arrived at this day of achievement and recognition of your family as newly minted healthcare professionals, and now the real journey begins. Class of 2022, as I said earlier, you're always welcome home anytime, and we will leave the lights on for you. But I would be remiss if I didn't, as your president, take you back to our, our foundational story, the story of young Samuel Meharry, who saw a small beacon of light when his wagon got stuck in the backwoods of Kentucky. He saw the beacon, knocked on the door, was greeted by family of African Americans and they rendered aid to him and a promise made and a promise kept is why Meharry exists today. So that model that we have, worship of God through service to mankind, has actually been in effect from the very beginning. So graduates, remember this is your world. Don't let anybody tell you differently. Shape it as you will and go out and do the things that you brought here with, with, with you those feelings of service, the kindness, the grace, the community you build together, take those things with you and change the world. Lord knows the world needs you and your gifts. Can you do that for us? We have one last act to perform before we leave. Graduates, please take your tassels and move them from the left, right, left, right to the left. <laughs> And with that simple act, we have come to the conclusion of our 147th commencement at Meharry Medical College. Thank you all for coming, and may God bless all of you. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Let us pray. Oh God, we are so grateful for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. We are so grateful for Meharry Medical College. I ask, oh God, that you empower each graduate, each person here today to live their lives to service. We ask, oh God, that you will calm and bless each and every one of us and keep us. Now, unto him that is able to keep you from falling 
and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, be majesty, honor, dominion, and power from today henceforth and forevermore. To God be the glory. It is in your name that all of God's people said, Amen. I'm sorry, please remain seated as the processional proceeds. Recessional. I don't, not looking at my notes here, recessional.
Graduation. You may now go and greet your graduates. <laughs> 